All right, guys, today we're working on a water cooler for ice cream machine. We added a third machine to this place, and basically these are water-cooled condensers. This is where it rejects the heat to. So it comes out here into this condenser. This condenser is controlled by a couple thermostats that are strapped on the header here. And then uh, your pump down here on bottom is how it circulates the water. You got a bypass valve here. And then uh, basically you got some bleeders and things like that. I had the guys add a big old ball, monster ball valve, make it a little easier to add and bleed and stuff like that. So we've got that ready to go. And uh, basically uh, the fans, when it's colder weather, it'll shut down one or two of the fans just based off of the header temperature. And then underneath here, it looks just like a regular condenser that you would regularly see because, I mean, this is a uh, heat craft condenser unit. Got a little expansion tank there. So we're going to go downstairs and take a peek and uh, look at some of the stuff down there. They added me some isolation valves. And so basically we got three water-cooled ice cream machines here. And what we did is we added uh, an extra machine to it. So we've got them all in parallel, which can make it a little difficult if you got air in it. So we've got isolation valves on each and in, uh, every one of them here. And then this one here is a machine that we leased out for, and now we're selling. So I'm flushing out the coaxial coil. And that right there is what a coaxial coil looks like. This is the U431 Stolting uh, I2 unit. Uh, I went through and put all new belts, all new contactors. Basically went completely through the machine, made sure everything was ready to go for the next customer. And uh, we just got done making sure all your phasing's correct on it, which I've got everything unplugged. So and uh, made sure our rotations are correct. It should be going clockwise when you're looking at it from the front. Uh, also, because of the way these things are powered, you wanna make sure your phasing is exactly the same on both sides because if you lose one leg of power uh, on, say, you would unplug the left side of the machine, it'll automatically switch and take power from the right side. Uh, so you've gotta make sure this is correct because what it'll do internally on the board, which is located back behind here, it'll literally swap an L1 for L1, L2 for L2, L3 for L3. And if they're out of phase, they'll have a dead short. So anyhow, like I said, we pretty well have backed out our water control valves. These valves here basically are how we're controlling our head pressure. This goes to the high side, uh, discharge side of the compressor. And then based off of whatever you set this at, which, you know, for these machines in particular, I think it's around 235 on our 404, we'll set that up and then that will regulate how much flow goes through. Because like in a day to day where it's really cold outside, if you just run it, your head pressure would be really low and things would be out of spec. So right now though, to get it so that we could actually power through it and get it all descaled, uh, basically what I ended up doing was just backing them all the way out. And to bleed the machine is gonna be the same scenario. We're gonna back, leave these backed out. And then I have to do that also to these other two machines that were existing and we can actually isolate these things one at a time. They come up here to the top, come across. And what we did is we've got a valve here and here so that we can loop our pump down and back again, similar to what we got over there. We can isolate it from up above here and here. And then over here, we have a water cool condenser for our ice machine. We gotta get that bled too, which is gonna make it so much easier now to be able to uh, bleed these things down and we have to work on them. Uh, we've got, like I said, two ball valves here and ball valves to isolate it. So we can actually bleed these one at a time with a parallel circuit that we have going on here. It was very uh, difficult to get all the air out. Um, just, it was just a nuisance. It didn't happen very often, but when you do have an issue, it really sucks. We basically reclaimed our glycol. We'll be pumping that back into it. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing back together. Get this rinsed out with water and get all that acid out of there. What we were using on it to dissolve it was some new Calgon liquid scale dissolver. And the pump we got in there was actually a little pump made by new Calgon that's all sealed and that's actually made for acid like this. So go ahead and get our hoses hooked on. There it goes. These pumps do not prime worth a crap. So what we'll do 
we'll let this uh, drain backwards through the pump up here. And that'll prime itself like this. Watch the bubbles. There's some bubbles. No more bubbles. So now we're solid. Now we can plug it back in. It'll suck it right up. What we're going to do is just bleed the machines here. So that's the hardest part. As you pour it from the top, the air is going to naturally come up, but getting it all the way down the wall and back up again is the problem. We're going to loop it down and back up again to that right there. So who says this ain't going to work right because the pressure of the water is going to drain it all down here. Let's find out. Let's see how this happens. I brought more glycol with me, so we're going to add some to it. Doesn't look like I shot any water up here. Usually, keep a little extra up here. Have to see if we're pure or not. Looks like it. Now, I'm not using the pump up here on the roof at all. Not yet. This will allow us to add some water. We just need freeze protection for uh, well, negative 15. Just really depends. He doesn't run in the winter time, so freeze protection versus burst protection is a uh, is a big difference. Freeze protection allows it to work without slushing, and that's going to screw you. Versus burst protection, which is where your pipes end up busting. Now a lot of the reasoning behind doing what we did here was so we could do that right there and add some water to it without having to go through a lot of torment. All that stuff in the roof is pure. So, okay, so we're looping. Starting to loop. There we go. Okay, so there's that. So, so far we've gotten the glycol out of the 50 gallon drum. We're looping down through here so we can actually valve off this one. And here's my supply. So we can go to the furthest one, which is down here to this one. And what we can do is we can kick the machine on and run it for a bit, which is gonna make it open up those valves. So we're gonna do that real quick. These here are kind of isolated right now. Do these one at a time. To me, it just seems like it would make more sense. Now we've got some water in here. We're not going to run these for very long. This is the one that's open, so we want to put it in that. Serve, serve, and serve. Sounds like it's running to me. So should be able to fill some more. It's obviously looping. If it wasn't loop, if it wasn't looping, there's no way it couldn't be looping if we didn't have. Because with these being shut off, there's no way for it to loop back. So we're obviously going down and through that particular machine right there, no problems at all. We're not letting this run very long, so we don't want to freeze up our barrel because that's just water inside there. But to me, looks like we've got probably it completely open. So. Now we'll go ahead and shut her back down. The other machine's on. So we want to open that up. We'll bow this one off. We'll make sure this one loops through. I feel warmth in here, so it's definitely extracting heat from the water. There we go. So in all reality, we should be all fine. We'll go ahead and open this one back up, that way we don't forget. Go ahead and open this one too, because it was already open. There you go. I got all the machines here, so we're gonna put her back into off. We'll go ahead and valve this off. Okay, we're unhooking that, and we're gonna do the ice machine now. Isolated there, and we're going to do the same thing to this one right here. So we just gotta make the uh, ice machine run. Machine just kicked on. Yeah. 
see if we get some go go juice. There it is. Bled right through. Yeah, sorta. Of. There we go. No parking over there from here on. Alright, so we've got that isolated now. And now we're just gonna go up on the roof and we'll open that up there and we'll let the circulator do its job. And then uh, we'll check our freeze protection and see where we're at. Just a little gizmo, here's our fractionometer. And basically this is how we're going to uh, check it. Put a little bit of the blue, whatever it is you got there, look through it and then you can see what your value is. The uh, blue stuff, which is uh, freeze control, that's the brand of it. But there's a chart on the side of the bucket for that one there. Okay, hopefully we don't get shot in the face. Hell yeah. So, got some there. Let's see how the pump looks, see if it's circulating. Close that back down. I'm gonna let this circulate for a bit. It pulls off the bottom header there. I wanna make sure that we yeah, we got solid stream there, so we're not running the pump dry. So I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna get a sample of it now that's all mixed together and see what my strength is at. Probably about 46, 47%. That would depend on the outdoor temperature the machine will be used at. With your situation, we can focus on the burst protection. Yeah, you need a little more, so I'm gonna add a little bit of just pure to it. So here's the stuff. Like I said, it's called freeze control. You Calgon. Here is your freeze versus your burst. And we're in the 40 some percent. Burst is at negative 52, and freeze protection is one. And that's at 50 percent. So at 45, you're gonna probably be about five degrees freeze protection, and somewhere probably in the 30 something below in the burst so we're gonna add a little bit more because you know it don't usually get much below negative 10 here to negative 15 on average but that's only for a couple days or maybe you know a few days out of the out of the freaking year and that's very seldom that extra height they gave me looks really makes it a lot easier And it'll be like that when we're done. Cap will just keep the garbage out of there, which don't need no pipe dope or any of that crap on it. That's the uh, majority of what's going on here. Basically, we bled the hole downstairs first, which made it a lot easier to get this done a little quicker also. You can see down there, the sight glass. A little foamy looking, but that's not uncommon. Basically, that's how a glycol system is uh, laid out. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers that have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you would, consider it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Is there something you would have done differently? Is there uh, a couple tricks that you know of to make things a little easier? So until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.